Okay, so uh, we have a, a few minutes left, and I thought I would talk a bit about the process here. And so, you know, there's a question earlier about, you know, what kind of, uh, of applications we're using and the tools we're using. Um, to step back, you know, one level, maybe beyond that, thinking about the, the process that we're, you know, file to fabrication and kind of understanding what we're trying to achieve here is, is we want to work in a way that allows us to deliver uh, this project without, uh, Potentially, without having to to do a bunch of drawings that uh, that we're passing back and forth, and um, there's some some specific reasons for that. Uh, uh, it, I think it helps us with the workflow. It can be a little more fluid. Um, we are we're really leveraging um, the the availability of the the fabrication shop in this manner. Uh, but essentially, what we're trying to do is, if we go to the next slide here. Um, Everything that we've rationalized uh, with the geometry, um, we're extracting that panel data. So we talked about we started in Rhino and Grasshopper, and we've kind of rationalized the panels themselves uh, on the ZEPS system, uh, which is the Zaner uh, system, uh, and they had some help from Studio NYL to kind of lay the ZEPS system uh, within this overall uh, kind of structural grid. So we're extracting that panel data, and we're getting uh, essentially um, a text file that contains all the coordinates for these panels. That's right. So when you say you're extracting the panel data, you mean you're extracting the endpoints of each panel in 3D space, maybe plus the cent centroid of each panel, right? Yeah, yeah, ex exactly. So that we're we have we have the data that we can take uh, the that we've extracted that we, then we can feed into another application or even the same application later on and essentially uh, recreate the same scenario. Okay. So you're sending XYZ points for those you know those four XYZ points for each panel. Yeah, essentially. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, so then the next thing we're doing is we're trying to generate the raster data. Um, and so that's what we explained earlier is taking this image um, ras that we've rasterized and applying that uh, to these panels that we've, that we've rationalized across the surface. And so you can see here that, uh, that upper left image, we're taking that JPEG, and, and that's where we bring that, uh, that extracted ge geometric data uh, in the text file. Uh, and we combine that with the image in uh, Visual Studio, and that's where we're kind of layering the two together at that point, so that we can we can map the physical uh, constraints of the panel uh, to the um, the perforation pattern that's going to locate the centroids of all of the their center points of all of the perforations. Okay. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to take that and we need to map that to a material. Um, and so, so this is essentially we're mapping that uh, that image uh, to the actual uh, panel itself. And so this allows us to, to visualize this in the way that we talked about uh, that will um, really uh, be uh, more true to the way we actually see something rather than just a representation. So um, here we're taking that uh, the, the information that we've uh, combined in Visual Studio and we are taking that into 3D Studio Max. And so now we have each one of these triangles. Um, we have the information that we can rebuild those uh, and we can map the perforation pattern to the individual triangles. So let me ask you, I mean, the reason you're mapping this to a material is just purely for visualization purposes and maybe for study, um, or is there something beyond that? So it's, 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 so it's both. It's first for the, for the visualization study, it's, it, you know, it's, it's sure. going to be, um, you know, required to be able to do that and actually see that in the way mm -hmm. it works. But then the next thing is that uh, we, we have to map the, uh, the actual perforation information um, to the geometry also. Um, so, so the, the steps that we're using to get to the visualization process are very similar to the steps that we're using to create the information that we can actually build the panel with. Okay. And so that visualization that allows us to start to look at this from the from the different uh, different focal links here that we're looking at, so we can start to understand uh, with this aluminum skin, uh, with this particular finish and this particular um, pattern, uh, by the the perforations that we've located with the constraints involved, uh, we start to see something like this, and we can go through, and we did several iter iterations of that to kind of see all the different effects of, of uh, the different uh, the different tiling, the different uh, the different visual procedures that we did, and so from there. Um, 
what we set up this process to do was that we could easily start to generate our drawing files. And so as we talked about that information where we were mapping everything to be able to visualize it, we now have uh, the information layered so that uh, we have the, the triangle located and we have the information associated with those perforations. So the center point is there, but we also know what the diameter of that hole will be. And so at this point, we could uh, kind of automate uh, the generation of all the drawing files for each of these uh, 70,000 plus panels. Uh, which would be a big, a big, uh, you know, time saver. And there's there's been examples of that that have been done before. Um, you know, where where people are writing scripts to to generate a lot of the cut sheets and a lot of the uh, the details for some of the things like this. Because in many jurisdictions, you're required to have the paper drawings for permitting. However, uh, if we go to the next slide, um, the way that we in, anticipate and we are intending to deliver this is instead of drawings, we are going to uh, generate text files instead uh, that will essentially probably be a CSV, a comma separated value file containing all of the information for mm -hmm. the panels and the perforations uh, and their location. Uh, and that could be delivered directly to Zaner uh, or a fabricator. Um, and they could use that uh, with very minimal processing uh, to take that into G-code to drive the machines to create these individual uh, triangles with the individual perforations uh, for that unique image that we saw.